I was just sitting down to edit the video and I realized I haven't made an intro. So in case you're new here, hi, hello, my name is Rachel. I'm a nutritionist, personal trainer and a wellness coach. Today I wanted to take you through a full day of eating, showing you what I like to include to optimize my hormonal health, make sure that I feel energetic and that I have enough fuel for my training sessions. Also a quick little thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring a portion of today's video. Now I do have a whole series on this, but in case you didn't know, I have PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. So the way that I eat is in a way to manage my symptoms and make sure they don't come back because for years I was dealing with things like fatigue, hormonal acne, irregular cycles, insulin resistance, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Stuff, and I currently don't deal with those anymore. And I would say a vast majority of that is due to my nutrition. Now, this is just one particular day plucked at random. So don't feel like you have to replicate, but take meal ideas and inspiration from this because your nutrition needs to be set up for you. Overnight oats are here. I'll show you guys how to make these very shortly. Sorry about my morning voice. I literally have not spoken yet today. And then I'm actually adding some jam. Yes, I know I could do fresh fruit, PB and J oats currently, because I've been trying to perfect the recipe for the blog. I really like it, so I just gotta pick my favorite blend and then it will be ready. So this is my go-to oats right now. It's really, really easy. Doing about 55 grams of oats and then a scoop of whey in each one. I've been having these as overnight oats, but you could also make it as fresh oats. If you're making them fresh, I'd recommend stirring the whey into some water and then putting it into the cooked oats. It'll just give you a better consistency rather than putting the whey in and then cooking it. And we're going to do some cinnamon. I just love having oatmeal, especially before training. I get some messages sometimes on Instagram from people saying that having a full breakfast like this before they train and makes them feel unwell. Put more space between your breakfast and your workout then. Oh, I'm using a Shibani Fit and I'm gonna divide a tub into roughly half. Uh, it's just gonna help it have a better texture after it refrigerates. But yeah, so a breakfast like this I'll have and then I'll train about an hour or an hour and a half later. But if you're going to be lifting weights, you absolutely want to be having a proper breakfast. We need to make sure we've got the glycogen stores there. I'm just going to do a little bit of almond milk in each one. That's what it looks like when it's mixed properly. And then I'm just going to let that refrigerate overnight. So I thought if I sprinkle a few little tips through this video, it might actually make it more tangible and useful for you as well. So we're going to start by having adequate protein at each meal. So not only is protein consumption going to make sure that your body's getting the essential amino acids that it can't make on its own, but it's also going to help your body make protein derived hormones. These are called peptide hormones. So your endocrine glands actually make these hormones from amino acids. Peptide hormones are going to impact our whole range of processes from growth to energy metabolism, appetite, stress, and of course, reproductive ability. On top of that, an extra little benefit of having protein with each meal is it's going to increase our chances of satiation. So we have our appetite, and then we also have a protein appetite. And we often seeing people who don't consume adequate amounts of protein, that they still continue to have appetite. Oh, of course we've gone foggy. I just had the rice cooker on while I was on a client call. So I've got we have about three meals worth of rice here because I want a cup worth in each one. Okay, I currently have you sitting in my kitchen cupboard. Uh, I'm getting ready to cook my next meal now. I'm actually between client calls. I'm in a little bit of a rush, which is why I'm talking a little bit quickly. I'm gonna have a little bit of fats. I'm gonna cook with some olive oil. And then I've got a packet and a half of kangaroo sitting here. So 750 grams of kangaroo, super high in iron, super high in protein and ultra, ultra lean. And then I really like this marinade. It's a Marion's Kitchen one. Macros are really good on it and the ingredients list is quite good on it too. So this is the honey soy garlic marinade. I'm just gonna grab some green beans out of the freezer. This meal is so basic and it really replicates a meal that I would have post training. I haven't been able to train in a week now because I've sprained the facet joint in my spine between my L3, L4. It was dumb. I'm currently only able to do body weight work. So core, glutes, body weight only. I'm not allowed to pick up a weight. If you're anywhere else in the world, kangaroo is usually the equivalent of like deer. I'm going to make three meals worth just because I think if you're cooking once, always cook multiple portions. It's just gonna save you time later on. So that will hold me over for the next two days after this. 
My next little tidbit of advice is to lower your refined sugar intake. I'm not talking about fruits here, I'm talking about refined sugars. This can be from your obvious like snacks and cereals all the way to like fruit juices. Long-term intake of refined sugars does disrupt the gut microbiome, which as we know, will start to impact our hormones. Excessive consumption can also disrupt our hormone leptin. Uh, when we do that, it means we're not gonna feel satiated after a meal if our leptin isn't reaching the level that it needs to get to. Now, I also want you to try some stress reduction techniques, but excessive, like chronic ongoing stress can harm your hormones in several ways. And I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about this a few times before. If you're in the membership, I know there's a bit of content that sort of touches on this. Your body's response to stress is gonna activate like a cascade of mechanisms that lead to cortisol production. Cortisol is all good in small doses good when we need it but we don't want that overproduction and that chronic production but usually once the stressor has passed the response ends but in chronic stress or like long-term ongoing stress that's not necessarily the case and now more than ever people's bodies are constantly in that fight or flight mode chronic stress can cause your cortisol to remain elevated and that's going to start to impact your appetite it's going to start to impact your energy metabolism and it can lead to a change in lifestyle factors you might not recover from your workouts properly you might rest more you might tone down the amount of activity you do outside of the gym. You might have changes in the types of foods that you would go for. And it can, of course, lead to insulin resistance and a whole bunch of other things. So we're going to try some stress reduction techniques. Now, this is going to look different for everyone. For me, I love to do little guided meditations. I don't like to do meditations that aren't guided because I just need someone to tell me where my head's at. I need someone to give me some direction of where to go. So other things that I find really help are journaling. So journal prompts are really, really great or even just doing a brain dump. Set a timer for like five, 10 minutes and just get everything out onto the paper and make sure no one can read it. Now, thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. They are an all-in-one website builder and host, and I've used them for basically forever now to host my Eat, Run, Lift website. If you're someone who is looking to establish a presence on the web, but you wanna make the process really simple and easy and affordable, this is the best way to do that. They have all these gorgeous templates that you can jump in and choose from, customize them to suit your branding, and you can have things launched super quickly. Whether it's a blog, it's a brand, it's an e-commerce store, or maybe it's even a portfolio, you can get everything underway with Squarespace with built-in commerce options, blogging tools, and SEO capabilities. But I don't want you to just jump in blindly, so go over, you know, make a trial, set things up, see how it feels for you to use, and when you are ready to hit publish, use the URL that I'll put on the screen or the one which is listed in the description box, and that's going to give you a discount off your first purchase. This meal is one that is super easy to pack a whole heap of veg into. I love having greens at some point throughout the day, so if I'm not having them like this, that's when I would usually chuck them into something like a smoothie. Now, I prepped six of these meals the other day, which is mashed sweet potato. I'm not normally a huge mashed potato kind of person, but this holds up really well in the fridge, especially when we have to reheat it. So to cook this one, I basically peeled and chopped a bunch of sweet potato, boiled it, and then I put it into a bowl. I added a little bit of butter, some garlic, some salt, and then I mashed it up and I made six portions of this meal. So now I'm just gonna add it in my spinach. So I had been having white potato for the last little while and I thought let's swap to sweet potato for a bit because it is important to change your nutrients out now and again uh, just to make sure that your gut is getting some variety because sometimes if we eat the same things for too long we can start to develop what feels like a little bit of an intolerance just because we haven't gotten our body used to eating it. I'm just adding in 20 grams of feta. And my fourth tip is we're going to make sure that our meals include some healthy fat are going to help increase insulin sensitivity and they've also been shown to reduce inflammatory markers which is great on top of that there's also been some clinical studies which are showing that omega-3s can prevent an increase in cortisol levels during periods of chronic stress and even if we try our best to manage stress sometimes there are going to be days or weeks where our body is having a physiological response to the stress that we do find harder to control so some good sources to look out for avocados almonds peanuts including the fresh nut and the nut butter, macadamia nuts, hazelnuts, fatty fish like salmon, and olive and MCT oils. Oh my goodness, it is so dark outside now. This literally just looks like a bowl of beef, but it's not. It's salmon, bok choy, uh, shiitake mushrooms, quinoa. I'm having this for dinner. I meal prepped two of these earlier today. So I'm just gonna take you through and I'll show you exactly how I prep it. Trust me, it tastes way better than it looks. It doesn't help that it's so dark right now. All right, I'm just gonna show you how I prep these. I'm gonna make two portions. So I'm using quarter of a cup of vinegar. 
Then I'm gonna add a quarter of a cup of water, tablespoon of honey and mix these together first. I'm adding about a third of a cup of coconut aminos, but you can use soy sauce if that's easier. Some garlic, I'm just eyeballing it because I'm using the squeezy kind. I'm gonna stir this up and I've bought skinless salmon and I'm just gonna cut that into this and we're gonna leave it to sit in the fridge for about 30 minutes. I've got some quinoa on and cooking. I just let it boil and then I'm gonna turn it down to simmer. I've used one cup of uncooked quinoa. Make sure you wash it and then I put it in there with two cups of water. I'm gonna cook a bunch of bok choy leaves. They will wilt down quite a lot. So I'm just gonna pack this full. Now that these have wilted down a little bit, I'm gonna add some more garlic and some shiitake mushrooms. Just before I pull these off, I'm gonna add a little bit more vinegar and some lemon juice. I'm gonna take this off the heat. And then I'm just gonna add the salmon straight into that. Make sure the heat is on high now. We're only gonna add about a third of the sauce mix in. And then we're gonna put another third in the quinoa, and then we don't need this. Veg back in. So there's about a cup worth of quinoa in each container. If you don't want to cook it all up straight away and you're worried about how the salmon will hold, like this is why I only make about two portions because I feel like salmon doesn't hold that long in the fridge. What you can do instead is keep some in the marinade. Just make sure it's in an airtight container. And then when you want to cook it, you can just pull it out and it'll be ready for you to throw onto the stove. Increase your fiber intake. Of course, if you're eating enough fiber, don't increase it again because too much fiber can lead to some digestive issues. Women, you want to have around 25 grams per day and men around 30 grams per day of fiber is adequate. Fiber is actually an essential to a healthy and well-balanced diet. It increases insulin sensitivity. It prompts a leptin response, making you feel more full and satiated after a meal. And it's essential for the health of your gut microbiome, which again, like we've already established, will impact your hormones. On top of this, when we regularly and for like a longer period of time consume a high fiber diet, we tend to see a shift in the microbiome. And after a few weeks of this, this is when people usually say their taste buds changed. And it's not necessarily that your taste buds change, it's that your gut actually changed in response to the foods that you're eating. There are some other ways to improve your hormonal balance outside of your nutrition. Now I have made a whole video about this in the membership as well, but some basic little tidbits, we are going to prioritize taking care of our gut health, exercise regularly as this will have a really big impact. I cannot underline this one enough, but prioritize your sleep, get enough sleep and try to wake up at regular hours if you can. And like I touched on before, managing stress levels. Those four alongside your nutrition are going to have a huge impact.